We have talked so much about lockdowns and quarantines in recent weeks, but what if you lived in a country where the leader said it was all unnecessary? Belarus never imposed a lockdown to curb the spread of COVID-19. And take a look at this. Thousands gathered in Minsk over the weekend for a military parade. The president of Belarus was also there in attendance. But many in the country are weary of the government's lax policies toward the virus and are taking measures now into their own hands. ABC's Patrick Riebel has this report. For weeks, much of the world has been locked down. But in Belarus, things are a bit different. On Saturday, the former Soviet country held its annual parade marking the end of World War II. Thousands of troops watched by 10,000 spectators. No social distancing, almost no masks. It was just the latest example of the highly unusual approach to the virus taken in Belarus under this man, its dictatorial leader Alexander Lukashenko. In Belarus, no lockdown has been declared. Cafes and shops are open, as are most workplaces. People go to church. Even the National Soccer League has kept playing, the only one in Europe. Lukashenko, who rules as a strongman leader, insists the virus is not that dangerous. The outside world, he says, has lost its mind and lockdowns aren't necessary and are too economically damaging. Another country has become well known for choosing to avoid a strict lockdown, Sweden. But in Sweden, the government still imposed restrictions, banning mass gatherings and telling people to social distance. But in Belarus, that hasn't happened. Last month, the government even forced people to take part in a Soviet-style public works day. In effect, Belarus is carrying out a high-stakes experiment for the rest of the world. What happens if you try to carry on, more or less as normal, during the pandemic? Right now, the World Health Organization is warning that the results of that experiment could be disastrous. According to the WHO, Belarus has the second fastest growth rate of infections in Europe, far more than its neighbors. So far, what we observe, the so-called uh, quarantine or social physical distancing measures are, uh, introduced in Belarus are very partial and based on voluntarily. Uh, so it's a voluntarily uh, introduced or implemented by citizens. So there is no adequate uh, physical distancing measures which, recommend, which were recommended by the World Health Organization. The WHO has urged Belarus to implement quarantine measures such as closing schools and telling more people to work from home. Otherwise, it warns, hospitals could be overwhelmed. At the moment, healthcare capacity allows accommodating all the patients, but with this growth, this capacity can be very quickly exceeded. And then we will have a problem that people who would require medical assistance won't be able to get it. Belarus's official data shows the country has almost 24,000 confirmed coronavirus cases, but officially only 135 deaths, a number experts believe is suspiciously low. In a country where few trust official statistics, many Belarusians in any case are taking their own quarantine measures. People are avoiding those soccer games, for instance. Anna Filipenok has isolated herself and her son at their summer house. When everywhere there's restrictions on mass events and you're told you need to contact less with people, we have a parade. It's absolutely incomprehensible. I know that in Sweden they also haven't declared a quarantine. But the difference is that in Sweden they honestly declared the statistics. How many infected? How many death? And in Belarus? In Belarus, it looks like the statistics aren't honest. Some doctors in hospitals have said Belarus's death toll is artificially low, but many fear punishment for speaking out. One doctor told ABC News some deaths among coronavirus patients were being recorded under other causes, such as heart failure. In many hospitals, there's also a shortage of protective gear. Volunteers like Andrei Tokachov have taken it on themselves to gather masks and other equipment. For Gomenskoy Hospital, 200 respirators, 200 gloves. Up to today, we've had 2,000 appeals for help from health workers. And for doctors, it's very important psychological support because 
they understand that they haven't been left alone with this threat. President Lukashenko has said he will be proved right and that Belarus will not suffer worse than other countries. Ordinary Belarusians can only hope he's not wrong. Patrick Rival, ABC News, Dublin, Ireland. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.